On October 20th, the Overwatch League MVP of the 2019 season, Stage 2 and Grand Final Champion, Jay Sinatra won, stopped by the game gym to share their thoughts on the season and a step into the life of professional esports while providing instruction to our students. First, kind of, if you can give us just like a little overview about, you know, where are you from, how old are you, all that kind of stuff, uh, then we can, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll get into some of those other things. I am 19 years old. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I mean, I haven't been there in like four years now. Um, I started pro gaming when I was 16. I moved to Georgia around then, and that's when like my pro career really like took off. What were you playing? I played Overwatch professionally. Okay. Yeah. Did you play, like, were you playing other games before Overwatch? Yeah, I played Counter-Strike. I don't know if anyone plays Counter-Strike. Yeah, we get some Counter-Strike yeah. fans. <laughs> I was in, like, ESEA main, and then that's when, like, Overwatch just came out, so I just quit that to play Overwatch because I became, like, really good at it. So, yeah. Cool. What was, what was the transition from, like, I like this game, this game is fun, to, like, oh, wow, I'm, like, real good at this game? Yeah. Uh, right when Overwatch came out, I played with my friends, actually, my high school friends, like five of them, and we were just six stacking every day. And then, like, when Ranked came out, I got, like, Rank 1 and in Season 3, and then that's when, like, s this team called Selfless um, asked me to try out for, like, a salary and then to move out to Atlanta, Georgia in the team house, so that's how it all started. Um, but, I mean, I was just playing, like, for fun before I got Rank 1, so that's, that's pretty when, cool. Yeah. Um... All right, and, and we got a couple parents in the crowd. Like, what was it like when you kind of, like, how'd your parents take it? I know yeah. you talked a, a little bit about it on Fallon, but can you go yeah. into, like, a little a little bit more about that conversation? Yeah, I mean, my parents weren't, you know, the most supportive at the beginning, obviously, because I wasn't making any money, and I would have to move across the country. It's a big which, deal. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a big deal for me, too, at the time, and I was only 16. Um, but, like... I just sat them down and like I had my coach talk to them on the phone like for a, for like two hours um, and they were or he was explaining like everything to them because it was like kind of hard for me to explain um, and they wanted to make sure like I'm not like going to some killer's house or something so totally um, yeah it was it was really hard I did wait for Christmas too which helped me a lot because they're more supportive um, but yeah it, it was hard but eventually they became more supportive. That's awesome. But, I mean, I had to do, like, online school and stuff like that. Sure. Like, I had to still balance stuff in my life, so. It's got to be tough to, to maintain that yeah. balance as you're playing, <laughs> traveling, doing all that kind of stuff. What are what are some of the things that you do to kind of, like, as you're flying all around the world, you know, doing all this stuff, like, how do you kind of, you know, find time for yourself or, like, you know? Yeah. Um... I think about that a lot because I don't want to be, like, burnt out because a lot of people get burned out quick from yeah. playing, like, 12 hours a day, uh, especially when you're, like, practicing with the team. It's, like, really hard because it's very intense playing. It's not, like, casual playing. So it's very hard. Um, but, like, usually how I counter that is, like, right after team practice, I would just go to my room and, like, watch movies or YouTube or talk to my friends on, like, like Snapchat, like my high school friends, stuff cool. like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, like, weird that you're also, like, a normal dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. go to high school. People like, forget stuff that. Stuff like, like that. I'm yeah. just a normal person. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, so, you know, you talked about this just now, and, and, you know, one of the things that we're trying to work on with our kids mm -hmm. is, like, how do you find a good balance between putting in the work that mm -hmm. you need to do and playing too much? And I think that, like, for our kids, we're trying to, like, help them find a good balance uh, do you find that there's times where you, that that is out of balance and you got to either got to, Hey, I need to practice a little bit more or, Hey, I need to take a little bit more of a break from this game. Yeah. Um, usually for me, it's like when, when I start getting like, if I get really frustrated during a game, like yeah. if I'm getting mad tilted, uh, that's when I would like just stop because if you keep playing, you're just going to get more annoyed and more annoyed and then you won't enjoy it anymore. Um, so that's when I tend to stop, but like, um, when I want to play is like when I'm just feeling like my mechanics aren't there anymore, like not anymore, but like they're not that good at the moment in scrims or whatever when I'm playing with my team. That's when I want to like play more. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're practicing, like 
is it you hop in and you're just playing scrims? Do you, you know, have a certain warm up? Like, yeah. One of the things is that there's a lot of tools that teach you how to play a game, but not too many tools that help you practice the game. So like as we're practicing, do you have any like warm ups or or how do you I guess get in the mindset where you're ready to play or do you just like hop into scrims and you're yeah, like, no, I'm no. ready? No. So basically every day for me how it goes is basically or our whole team in general is we have team lunch. So we all sit at a like a dinner table or a lunch table or whatever. Um and we have a TV too. So we watch VODs, which is like basically we record our scrims from like yesterday or whatever and we watch it while we're eating together, like an hour before the scrim start. So we do that for an hour um, to get like our mind ready to like know what's happening in the game. And then um, scrim start, that happens for two hours. And then we have another one hour VOD review and break. And then we have another two hour scrim. And then we have another one hour VOD review after that. So interesting. Yeah. What do you, so VOD review is a huge, yeah. huge part of this. Yeah. What do you think that like, how I guess or or what ways do you feel like you're able to learn from watching yourself uh, on video yeah VOD review is huge um, you can't be good by not watching yourself play because you'll never like learn from your mistakes um, that's like the biggest thing in any game especially overwatch is like you want to learn like what you're doing wrong if you keep losing a team fight and you keep going through the same choke or whatever and you keep losing the team fight you want to know what you're doing wrong as a team so that's like what you review super cool um, all right, so you're really good at this. What do you think that, like, do you, I'm obviously you're working hard. What do you think are some of your, like, differentiate, like, differentiate, uh, differentiation factors? Like, what makes you, is it you're just a little faster, your game sense? Like, what do you think you, you, uh, makes you special? I don't know. Think fast reaction time, maybe a little natural talent. Like, I, I think there's natural talent involved in, becoming professional gamers, but um, I think you have to, like, um, bloom that natural talent, so you have to practice it a lot, and I just, like, played a ton when I was a kid, like, 10 to 12 hours a day before I became pro, and even when I did become pro, still, 10 to 12 hours a day, so it's just playing a lot and, like, trying to learn from your mistakes all the time. So you got the talent, and then you yeah. put in the work. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Um, all right, so you're coming off uh, uh, an MVP season. Uh, your team wins a championship. Like this is pretty much yeah. like you're like you're on the top of the mountain. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can you talk to us about a like a team highlight and maybe an individual highlight that you had over the over the season that you really like thought was awesome, or maybe just an individual? I would say no. I'd say for the team highlight, like. I don't know if anyone here like actually follows Overwatch League that hard, but like when we won stage two um, against the Vancouver Titans because we lost stage one finals against them, um, and we were like heartbroken, like like at least five of us were crying when we went back to the practice room, um, and after that we just like after that like the two months after that is just intense scrims like we're focusing really hard like we're getting in arguments all the time because we want to win so bad. Um, so finally winning against them um, in stage two, that was like probably the greatest team moment we had. Well, and the grand finals. Obviously. Well, yeah, and then you got to do it again too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, for personally, I mean, obviously winning MVP. Yeah. Uh, last season I didn't do too well, but this season um, that was just my biggest goal was to like be known as a good player and winning MVP. I mean, just shows that even more. So I'm you happy about that. I guess like what. Were there differences that you did in, in like the amount of practice, mm -hmm. how you practiced, who your maybe who your teammates were that allowed you to kind of yeah. you know uh, go from from having an okay season to, ha to having an excellent season? Yeah, I think just the biggest thing is in season one, I was still like immature, like a little kid. Like I thought I was like I could just come in in one v six or like just be everyone by myself and not use my team or whatever. Um, which didn't work out. I did very, very, very horribly, actually. Um, so season two, uh, when Krusty, our new coach, came in, and he, he taught me, like, so much about, like, just how to use my team and how to be a leader and um, not be selfish um, and be, like, selfless for the team, basically. Interesting. And that helped me a lot. Can you Can you talk about a little bit of, like, I mean, just so you, I mean, when you say you're selfish in a game. Yeah. What is that? Like, how can people be selfish in Overwatch? Uh, it's basically, like, if you, like, 
like you're if you okay you should have the mindset that you're good enough to like be anybody but like if you think you can like just beat everyone on your own or beat another team on your own without like communicating to your own team about what you're doing and then you just like go in so basically like if you were to go in 1v6 before your team does and you don't even let them know or don't say anything about it and then you just die yeah and then, yeah so it's yeah. a big difference if you're gonna one v six and yeah. you just tell everybody, "Hey guys, I'm doing this." Yeah, yeah. Even if you say it, that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right. So looking forward, um, like, what is the off season like? What is what is this period of time like? And then and then what is kind of like the ramp up to everything up? Uh, like, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely taking the off season to just take time not play that much because I'm playing a lot when the season starts and it's very hard very very hard um that's why you're seeing a lot of players like retire really fast because it is really hard so definitely taking time off um because next season especially we're gonna start traveling and our team specifically shock has like probably the hardest schedule because we're going to literally every place like both the China's like Guangzhou Hangzhou Korea, Paris, London, so it's going to be very hard, so I'm just relaxing for now. I got an awesome spot for pork buns in Guangzhou for you. <laughs> okay, so all right, let yeah. me know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a lot. Um, yeah. All right, so like, and now going into this next year, you're, you guys have targets on your back, mm -hmm. like... Yeah, it's going to be harder. Yeah, like steady course, like same as, or, or you know, with roll lock and all this stuff, like our, our big kind of changes... Just like for the team or just Overwatch in general, kind of like on the horizon? Yeah, I think Overwatch is going to change a lot, especially with, I'm sure there's going to be some announcements at BlizzCon. There's going to be some like big announcements, I'm sure. Um, so Overwatch is definitely changing. Our team, we're definitely going to probably like stay somewhat the same because we have a championship roster yeah. and we have like the best players. Um, and definitely the best coaches in Overwatch. So no, nothing's changing for us. That's awesome. Um, all right, so um, crowd, I want to make sure we get we get everybody's questions here. Um, so a any any questions that you guys have, we'll uh, we'll toss them up here to Jay. All right, mine's relatively long. Is okay. there beyond the summit at all? Is it the Counter Strike one? Um, they so do something called a summit, and they have multiple games to do it. But they have a big like house in LA. But they invite. Okay, yeah, I do, I do yeah. know that. Yeah. How would you think like an, say an Overwatch one with the team with the tier two and tier um three teams affect like the um general competitive community? Um, I think that would be very good, but I don't think Blizzard would allow that. I'm not sure on that though, but I think it definitely would be very good because I I do watch that tournament when it goes on for Counter Strike and I re I really enjoy that and it gets a lot of viewers all the time, and a lot of like Reddit posts about it. So um, I definitely think it would help grow, but it's up to Blizzard. So yeah, it's nice that Nintendo doesn't want to touch <laughs> the game. You know, like, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Um, Raga. Um, what was your team's opinion on when Roblox came? You guys had to change. Yeah. Um, we were like, Shock was like three of 20 teams that won, not wanted Rolock to come into Overwatch League because we were good at GOATS at the time. And I guess those 17 other teams weren't. So um, we really didn't want Rolock to come in at the time. But like when it did, like we knew we would still be fine um, because of our like DPS lineup. We have four of like the best DPS, and like everyone else is really nasty. So um, we didn't want it, but I mean, it was fine in the end. So anybody else? Just as like a uh, just like continuing of that, and a little bit of what Josh asked earlier. Um, coming off of the uh, going or heading into two 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 roll lock, like back in stage three like, yeah. against Shanghai yeah. specifically, like. And then heading into stage four plus grand finals, do you think uh, like coming off of being one of few teams that wanted to keep three three enabled, yeah. was it more vindication than anything that you guys are actually just that damn good at this game? Ah, <laughs> uh, no, actually, I think a lot of people just expected us to win anyways yeah. because of, like the depth of the roster we have. So um, not really. I mean, we we're obviously like bad because GOATS wasn't staying, and, like, we love GOATS because, like, we're the best at it, so. Yeah. Um, we had two main tanks swapping in between Orissa, like, it was yeah. just, 
yeah. weird looking profile for you guys at the time? Yeah, it was it was weird, definitely weird at the time. Like right when the meta changed to a roll lock, like our scrims wasn't looking that good. Like we were kind of okay, we weren't losing, but like sixty forty percent in scrims. Flexing um, your script bucks, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually it's a hundred zero. Oh, but <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was weird at first, but I mean we overcame it uh, because of our coaching staff basically. So, along with Overwatch, mm -hmm. what games do you play for, like, fun? Yeah. And what games do you play to strengthen other skills in the game? Okay. Um, I actually don't believe in other, like, I don't believe in, like, the aim hero thing for Overwatch, because I think Overwatch is, like, very, very, very team-based game. Um, it's also a skill-based game, but, like, it depends what hero you're playing. Like, if you're playing Widow, then, yeah, Aim Hero would help a lot. Or if you're playing Counter-Strike, Aim Hero would help a lot. So I, I don't play any of those games to strengthen my Overwatch game. Um, but I do play, like, Borderlands 3 for fun. That game is legendary. Um, League of Legends I do play sometimes. Counter-Strike I rarely play. Yeah, those games are fun. So I've got a question. So I'm a league guy. Yeah. Uh, so, um, <laughs> really? Right. So, League of Legends patches like every two weeks, and like mm -hmm. that's like a pretty big meta shift. Sometimes it's big, sometimes it's not. How did you stay on top of the roll lock? And like, what's your opinion on Blizzard patching like every single month? Like, is it mainly on you to stay on top of the, your, your game, or is your coaches that help you prepare for that? Because like, I coach college League of Legends, and like one time we had a new champion came out, and mm -hmm. we weren't ready for it, and we lost the finals because of it. Yeah. So like, how, is it mainly on you to be prepared for these changes? Like, does Blizzard let you know, like, hey, we're gonna change, like, Zarya or Tracer? Yeah, I mean, just like, hey, here you go, like, here's a bunch of stuff. No, we see we see all the patches in the PTR patch list, right. like, like a month before this season. But I, I think next season will definitely change because this season, uh, they wanted to start like each stage with the patches so that's it so it gave us like two months in between like every patch basically or like a month and a half or however long the stages were so it was very like easy for us to like transition because we kind of knew like it was coming and like between stages there's breaks so we had like two weeks to scrim on that patch before the stage started so it was pretty easy but um so yeah, I think next season it'll be, it'll change like way more often. But I think it is on us to like learn learn it better, like because of our depth of roster, like and our coaching staff. It's like basically who has the better coaching staff and like um, variety of players that can like mesh well in any meta. Can you talk a little bit about what the interaction is like with the coaches? And yeah. Like how and in what ways are they helping you? Obviously, that you're watching video together mm -hmm. and things like that. But like, you know. For, for us, like, a, a bunch of people here are, like, we're, we're coaches yeah. and things like that. So, like, yeah, you know, how can we be better coaches, I guess? Um, I think for both the coaches and players, I think just the main thing um, for players is, like, your coach wants you to get better. So you shouldn't, like, be mad or, like, take anything they say to, like, like they're attacking you or anything. They just want you to get better at the game. Um, so... Wait, what was the word? I was going to use a word. Um, okay, ba yeah, basically that. And um, so Krusty, he, he basically says everything just how it is because he wants us all to be on the same page. He doesn't want to beat around the bush, basically. He wants to keep everything, like, everyone knows what's happening, um, even though if it's mean or not. Like, he, he doesn't say it, like, in a mean way, but, like, yeah. he'll just say it straightforward. Um and like, it's, on, it's like, on the players to, like, like know that that's not, like... like you like, missed this shot here. No, just, not, no, no, no. He doesn't talk no. about shots missed. No. He doesn't talk about that. He just talks about, like, what we did wrong as a team. Gotcha. And, like, what we could have done better or what we should have done better. And then, like, everyone just accepts it. Cool. Yeah. So it's, like, you to, to work on your stuff. And he's kind of, like, talking yeah. about you guys working together as yeah. a team. Do you have, like, individual... Is there, like, a DPS coach and a tank coach and a head coach? No. Like, kind of like other sports? No, there are... There's just one it's dude. Just, no, it's it's three coaches, but, like, they all... They get in arguments a lot together, and then they come up with a solution <laughs> at the end and then tell us about that solution. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. It's like a collaborative yeah. coaching, uh, like, yeah. group. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, sorry. Back to back to <laughs> crowd. If, if anybody, yeah. you know, we can keep questions going. Yeah. I have a, so not a cool question. Okay. For you, but <laughs> okay. I'm mom. <laughs> okay. Um, so you said that when you're 
like in the season and gaining huh. all the time, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. So what does really hard mean and then what supports do you have in place to help you with that hard? Uh, or what do you uh, hard means like a lot of stress, really a lot of stress mm -hmm. um, because we're perform or we're playing to be the best and we're practicing to be the best. So it's not like we're not like practicing eight hours a day, like casually. We're not just playing for fun. Like we're playing really really intense like everyone's getting in arguments all the time like on what we should have done better and mm -hmm. stuff like that if we're mm -hmm. losing um support uh there's not much support that's why it's really hard okay. um so that's that's when i have to take it like if i have to go back to my room and watch like a movie or something so just to get my mind off yeah okay. yeah just to get my mind off of, like the game yeah I feel like it's tough. Like I feel like in the you know when the NBA first started, yeah. dudes were driving around in vans, <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's like what you guys are mm -hmm. experiencing with this first couple of years. I imagine in ten, twenty years, like Overwatch teams will have private planes that they'll fly everybody around <laughs> in, and mm -hmm. like that. I mean, that's just like every yeah. other sport. It's just you guys are are living that like that grind yeah. uh, as as the league and everything comes into existence. Um, all right, any any advice for parents? And, you know, like your kid's a gamer. Hey, mom, dad, I really dig this thing um, from either what you've seen or what you've experienced. You yeah. know, like uh, any any advice? I think just being open minded. Um, obviously, make sure the kids are staying on top of the schoolwork and, and balancing their lives, doing sports, stuff like that, because I still did that when I when I was growing up. Uh, my parents made me still like do online high school when I moved across the country and they text me every week like you're doing your homework whatever nice. yeah so um but letting them also play I, that's hard to do but like letting yeah. them play a lot if they're like really passionate about it while balancing their life it's, it's hard but yeah, yeah. it's uh, finding that balance is definitely yeah. tough um and guys I'm gonna ask a, oh yeah yeah I, so go back three years ago when you said um you were playing with a team before you went pro. Yeah. And then woke up one morning, you were ranked one. Yeah. The guys that were on your team, what were their rankings? Um, Maybe. They're like top 500, but um, not rank one. <laughs> but, but I mean, so they were in the ballpark or? They're yeah, somewhat close. They're like 400, 300, 200. Gotcha. On there. Have any of those guys gone pro? Go pro and selfless. Right. Dak did the first season of Overwatch League, and then he quit Overwatch. DeFran did the second season of Overwatch League, and then he quit. That's it. Carpe. Yeah. Okay. So two Carpe. Carpe. Third. Nice. Yeah. Carpe is still in the league. So yeah, three people. So if you weren't a professional Overwatch player, yeah. What do you think you? Would be. Would be. <laughs> or, or if you feel like you would need to retire, where, where do you, where do you um, think is your... If I wasn't a professional Overwatch player, I think I would, like, def like right now, if I just quit right now, I would definitely want to become a streamer um, on Twitch because I think my platform is, like, pretty big-ish, um, and I can definitely make a living off it. Um, and I just want to stay within the esports scene because I, like, want to help grow esports and it's just like now booming and it's now growing a lot so i want to be a part of that um but if i didn't play like when i was 12 and i was just like a normal i'd just be in college mm -hmm. living in nor like yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh since you and your team are expected to perform so well yeah in games were you ever like nervous for games and how do you like mentally prepare for games yeah. especially for like grand finals mm -hmm. um we try not to get nervous, obviously, because that affects gameplay. Um, the grand final is definitely the most nervous I've ever gotten in my life. I, I like was numb all around my body walking <laughs> out, actually. Um, and to help that, I just the breathing in, breathing out method through the nose, out through the mouth, longer out through the mouth. Uh, that, that's what I do every time I get nervous for anything, like even like interviews or something that I get nervous for. Like Jimmy Fallon, I got really nervous and I was doing that, so. Um, yeah, that method helps me a lot. I, I don't have like some secret. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <a> secret. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, <right>? sure. <laughs> What's uh? I, I mean, you had Fallon. Mm -hmm. Any other cool experiences that that like this has has opened doors to? Um, any I don't know. cool celebrities you meet or anything like that? Oh, 
Yes, I've met Marshawn Lynch, which was crazy because I'm from Seattle, so nice. that was crazy for me. Um, Ryan he seems Howard, like a cool dude. Yeah, he, uh, he's, he's very, crazy. He's, he's cool. really yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I met Ryan Howard. That was awesome because I played baseball for like eight years growing up. Um, but biggest thing definitely the Jimmy Fallon one. That was huge. Um, NBC Nightly News. It's pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, we're going to get to playing, but I want to wrap up and grab questions, too. Hey, so. just uh, one quick question, Jeff. One of the big things that we focus here at the Game Gym is resilience, right? So bouncing back after a tough loss, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Could you kind of just go through a little bit how uh, the team kind of came together and bounced back after you guys lost to the rain and then proceeded to go 4-0 throughout the rest yeah. of the Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that was more of a like a like a wake up call like um, let's not be nervous because for some reason like the end of season playoffs we were playing like a little nervous for some reason that first match uh, very nervous like we weren't doing anything we were doing in the scrims uh, before so like after that loss we we all just came together and like let's just like play like just to have fun this could be our last match like let's just have fun with it nice. and play like exactly like we do in scrims so that's what happened and we just dominated after that cool thanks that's super cool. I got one. So as you kind of like climb the ladder of SR, kind of, yeah. you kind of get more in touch with like the health of a game, like how healthy its community can be and kind of how healthy the game can be. So okay. as you climb the ladder, what do you kind of think of like Overwatch situation in terms of like communication with Blizzard and general just the health of the game and community? Um, we actually have great communication with Blizzard. We have like a big Discord Overwatch League Discord server thing. Um, with all that, like, Jeff Kaplan's in there, all the admins, whatever. Um, and if we have any problems with, like, game feedback, bug feedback, um, they're always, like, open-minded. And Jeff Kaplan literally, like, gave us his email, like, to say, like, yeah. So they're, they're great about it. Um, you guys can still ask questions because he's not going anywhere. We're just, I, I think it, we should play some games. I think that that's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's really important. I'll so, do anything. Thank you, guys. Yeah. This is so cool. Thank you for this opportunity. Yep. And uh, and we'll definitely, uh, you're always welcome back here whenever, you, thank uh, you. whenever you're in town. Thank you. Hell yeah, man. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll shoot.